question five. How do you find the dot product A dot B of two vectors if you know their lengths and the angle between them? What if you know their components? Again, these are just basically applying the equations that we covered in my earlier videos. So if you know the length of the vectors A and B as well as the length angle between them, then we can find the dot product by the following formula and this formula right here. So if, if theta is the angle between the vectors A and B, then A dot B is equal to the length, this is the length of the vector A, times by the length of the vector B, times cosine theta, and you get a scalar uh, right here. It's often called a scalar product, I, I believe. All right, uh, make this uh, smaller right here. And this angle is, is the angle between the two vectors. So vector A and B, like that. So vector A and B separate like that. And also this vector is, it can be considered A minus B. And uh, the reason for this is uh, if you add these two vectors uh, together, so B plus this one right here, A minus B, you get this cancels out, you're just left with A. So that's just the vector A there. And these are vectors. Like that, so that's epic, epic stuff there. And uh, yeah, so if we know the lengths and the angle, so if, if find if you know the lengths, if you know the lengths and the angle between them, you just use this formula. And then if we know the components, we could just use a definition. So if, if we know the components of A and B vectors, then the dot product A dot B is given by the definition, which is the multiplication of corresponding components and adding them all together. So uh, the, the definition of dot product, if A is components A1, A2, A3, and B as B uh, components B1, B2, B3, then dot product of AB is the number A dot B given by, and you would multiply this one and this one, and then add it to the multiplication of the middle one, and this one, and then the third one. So A1, B1 times, uh, yeah, plus A2, B2, uh, plus A3, B3. All right, and then question six, uh, we're asked, how are dot products useful? And uh, yeah, so uh, dot products, uh, if you look at the solutions, dot products have many useful properties. Uh, one of them here, actually is ChatGPT for this. <laughs> that book didn't uh, specify uh, exactly all the useful cases, but anyways, uh, they, did, they did a lot of them, they just didn't uh, state them directly. So uh, uh, the number one uh, property is determining the angle between two vectors. So if, if uh, theta is the angle between the non-zero vectors A and B, then cosine theta is equal to a dot b is the dot product divided by the lengths. So you can determine this angle right there, cosine theta, and you can take the uh, inverse cosine to get the angle. And this is all you need to know is the dot product and the lengths, and you can get the angle between them. So that's very, very, very useful. And again, I'm just using the same screenshots as before for this question. So if you know these uh, vectors and a dot product, you can uh, solve the dot product and the lengths, you know the lengths of them. The, this is the length right there, if you know the length, you can get the angle just by using a dot product, which is actually quite amazing. And then uh, the second party is, uh, property is checks orthogona uh, orthogonality, or in other words, uh, if it's vectors are per perpendicular. So two vectors are ortho orthogonal or perpendicular if their dot product is zero. And uh, here what I just added quickly is uh, also here, uh, so, so uh, two vectors are orthogonal or perpendicular if their dot product is zero, aka cosine 90 degrees is equal to zero, and you could see from over here, so cosine uh, 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 right here, theta. So if theta is 90 degrees, that's gonna be, well, if we recall how it looks like, this is the graph of cosine, looks like that. So this is at 90 degrees, so it's at zero. Yeah, so basically uh, at 90 degrees or, or pi over two, this is zero is cosine. Yeah, cosine uh, theta like that. Uh, so that means then this is zero, the only way it's zero if A and B, uh, if, uh, assuming they're not zero, yeah, they're, they're not gonna be zero, otherwise you'd be dividing by zero. So assuming they're not, the lengths aren't zero, the vectors actually have a uh, size, these dot products gonna be equal to zero. So then that's gonna be uh, for uh, perpendicular vectors. So uh, so two vectors A and B are orthogonal if and only if the dot product is equal to zero, A dot B is equal to zero. And also we could tell that if A dot B is greater than zero, uh, theta is gonna be acute, and if a dot b is equal to zero, or uh, pi is equal to uh, pi over two, yeah, or 90 degrees. This is in radians, uh, yeah, or pi over two uh, uh, radians, or 90 degrees. And if a dot b is less than zero, then the angle is going to be obtuse. And uh, we can see this, uh, again, as based on the cosine, so remember the cosine, it looks like that. And this is gonna be, uh, this is positive, is, is between zero and 90 degrees, or pi over two, like that. And then it goes negative uh, after that. So in other words, this angle, when angle's small, you get a dot b is gonna be, has to be positive. 
because cosine is uh, positive. And then when it's past 90 degrees, it's going to be uh, obtuse. In other words, it's beyond angles bigger than 90 degrees. And another useful property is projecting one vector onto another. So uh, recall scalar projection of B onto A. This would be the component of the vector B is equal to the dot product A dot B divided by the length A. So again, recall from earlier videos on that. And also vector projection of B onto A. This was the scalar, and now you could do the uh, vector projection. It's going to be the same thing as this, but then you multiply by the vector divided by its length. So it's just a unit vector uh, like that. So you multiply it at top and bottom so that you can have the direction and uh, it doesn't change the actual magnitude of the vector size. Like that. So projection of B is going to be, uh, yes, yeah, so vector projection. This is a scalar projection. The so same thing there, component, and then multiply by A times B. And you're going to Simplify this, you're going to a dot a dot b dot a divided by uh, length squared, like that. And here are some illustrations of these vector projections, again, using dot product, like that. So if you have a uh, vector a, vector b, and the projection of b onto a, uh, yeah, so per, uh, scale, and then the scalar formulas, that, again, using this one, and the vector is, and if you get an actual direction, uh, not just magnitude, you're going to get it over uh, over like this formula. And again, this is the vector projection of B onto A like this. And this is also uh, the absolute, uh, yeah, this is the length of this. You're also using the cosine. And it's the cosine theta there, where cosine number is adjacent over hypotenuse. Yeah, so if you have the length uh, B like this, this length B, this right here is going to be the angle. Uh, this is, let's say, let's call this uh, x, y. So cosine uh, theta is equal to x over absolute value of b. That's the adjacent of our hypotenuse. So move this over, you're going to get this uh, absolute value. Of, uh, yeah, you're going to get this length b times cosine uh, theta is equal to the x component or the vector projection of b onto a. All right, and there's the, uh, yeah, this is projection of a onto B, you just you draw the vector with a direction. This one is an actual length. All right, and also here you can also go in reverse direction as well. If if the B angle is on the opposite of this one, it's going to be the same thing but negative, like that. So that's the vector projections. Pretty epic, epic stuff there. All right, and uh, another property of dot products is calculating work done by a constant force. So if you have a force like here pointing uh, uh, pointing theta from this direction right here of the distance. So if you have a force pulling something like this um, along this direction, but it, 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 the force is pushing uh, upwards at an angle, then you could take the projection of the, of the force onto the distance uh, vector, and you're going to get the work done. So when you multiply together, so work equals to uh, this component of force, the absolute value of the, uh, the I mean the length of the force, the, the magnitude of the force, times by the cosine theta times the by the distance. That's work. As definition is just force times distance. And so, but since this force is at an angle, so you would take the component that's uh, along this times by distance and you get the formula for work. And then uh, uh, rearrange these together. It's going to be uh, work equals F, move this over. Uh, absolute value of F times, uh, I mean, just the length of uh, force magnitude times distance magnitude times cosine. That's just a dot product. So in other words, uh, when you have a force at an angle uh, relative to the distance, the dot product is the work done. So an, an example of that is just a wagon. So if you have a wagon like here, and you're pulling it here at a distance in this direction, the dot product, if you know the length, if you know, so if you know the force, you know the length, if you, if you uh, push this, let's say 50 newtons, 50 newtons at that angle, and then this one right here, you're gonna push this uh, along uh, this, this distance at uh, one meter distance. So the force is gonna be the dot product of that. So that's gonna be the component of this along this side and there. And uh, again, you could just use a dot product, or you could use cosine and whatnot. Uh, dot product, you just need the uh, components and the uh, coordinates and so on. So uh, these properties are very useful in many applications, such as physics, machine learning. Dot product is fundamental in neural networks in measuring uh, similarity between vectors, computer graphics, and engineering. And uh, here is a pause video and added this note. So this was taken from Chat GPT. There's a link to it, and go read it uh, there and so on. It's pretty uh, useful. Uh, yeah, pretty useful tool using AI and so on.